Welcome to Project Next Generation. Let's try this again. Welcome to Project Next Generation. My name is Aaron Sievers. I am the technology librarian here at the Elmwood Park Public Library. And today we are going to continue unboxing a new 3D printer, which I already started because I was so excited. Um, so as I was saying, and you couldn't hear, uh, basically, the uh, during the pandemic, we were 3D printing face shields for our frontline workers. And we printed a lot of them on our old 3D printer. And our old 3D printer is over there, the MakerBot Replicator. Um, we ended up printing, I think at last count, we were somewhere up around 180, close to 200. Uh, I still have a few uh, that I printed um, just in case we get a call for more. Um, but yeah, I think we were like at 188 the last time I checked. Our 3D printer was already pretty old at that time. We bought it in 2013, so it's um, definitely pretty old. And uh, a lot has changed in the world of 3D printers. And so I thought it was time to go ahead and get a new one. So we got this Prusa, uh, which is a very popular brand. People really like these printers because they are primarily, largely, open source um, and you can kind of do uh, whatever you want with them, which is really exciting. That being said, also, uh, they are uh, far better than I would say our, uh, I can't do math off the top of my head, uh, what is that, nine-year-old? 2013, <laughs> don't make me do math on stream. That's just a recipe for disaster. Um, so we're gonna open this thing up. We're gonna take a look at uh, everything it's got to offer. I don't really know exactly how this setup is gonna go because one thing, uh, one thing is for certain, uh, this, this printer is very different than our old one. Um, it uses the same kind of filament, uh, we're, we're going to still be using this 1.75 millimeter PLA filament. Um, so that's great because we have a ton of filament for our MakerBot and we should, emphasis on should, be able to just swap it in and swap it out. Um, I'm not 100% sure about, um, about that, but we will, that's going to be one of the first things that we test because uh, I would rather not have to buy more uh, filaments. So here we have, um, this came right on top. Uh, congratulations on getting your brand new original Prusa printer. Uh, we'd like to take this moment to thank you again for buying the printer directly from the author Joseph Prusa. Yeah, the, this whole company is just run by like one dude. Um, and you've supported, supported development and we will do our best to help start, help you start printing uh, right away. And so then there's a bunch of, uh, bunch of things, bunch of links to, to get to get started. Uh, we've got, looks like a list of parts. So some of these printers will come fully assembled, which is what we got, because let's be honest. Uh, but some of them will also just come in parts and you have to put them together yourself. Uh, so that is probably what that is for. We also have, we also have Gummy Bears, Haribo, that's awesome. Uh, I'm very excited for that, actually. I'm gonna eat those this afternoon. And then we've got a 3D printing handbook with stickers. That's the dude. That, oh, you can't really see it, but that's the guy. Um, and uh, yeah, that just looks like your basic operations manual. So that is great. So, all right, let's see if we can't get this thing out of its box. So right off the bat, I wonder if we can maybe raise this up a little bit. Raise all of this up a bit. Maybe a little higher. I've got two arms here competing for uh, height. They're gonna bump into each other. Not my arms, uh, camera arms. So we have a big old piece of, uh, here, maybe if I just move this down the line a little bit then you can see better. So this is a big old piece of foam. Big piece of foam. 
Oh yeah, so this thing is fully assembled and ready to rock and roll. So another really cool thing about the, the Prusa um, design is um, you can actually 3D print a lot of the pieces for your 3D printer, which is crazy. So if you have access to a 3D printer, like we do here at the Elmwood Park Public Library, and we have had a patron do this, you can print the pieces that you need to build your own 3D printer. Does that sound completely nuts or what? But believe it, we've already had somebody try to do it. And it turned out great. All right, so we've got some cardboard inserts that I'm just taking out here. And then I think this is pretty much the main deal. So I'm just gonna double check this box. I don't see anything else in there. Set that to the side, and then, et voila. So this was maybe the most uneventful unboxing I've ever done, <laughs> but that's all right. We're gonna take this thing through the rest of its steps and, uh, and have some fun. So uh, we still have a couple more boxes to unbox, so that's all right. Uh, let's see if we can focus up on the main dude here. All right, so what's in here? What are these? Okay, so this is, uh, this is what we were just talking about. This is the filament. So this is PLA 1.75 millimeter Galaxy Silver. You can see a little preview of it there. So let's pop this open and see if it looks the same as our old, fil our old filament. Um, I shouldn't say old filament, our current filament. Got some plastic on here to get off. All right, let's take a look. I like this box. Oh, whoa. So that is a cool color. I've never had a silver. I, we've done a ton of different colors of filament over the years. Um, I've never had a silver like this, though. This is sharp. I like the way this looks. And what's more, I like, I like this um, uh, clear reel that it comes on. All of the MakerBot reels are black, um, and they're very skinny. Um, by comparison, I could, I should go grab one, but I don't have one handy. Um, this one is uh, clear, it's wide, and it's silver. That's cool. So diameter-wise, like I don't know that it's precisely the exact same size, but uh, like that's the number that I always see. It looks very similar. So that is pretty cool. So we can pull out a piece right here and take a look. Very cool. I'm excited. I'm very excited. All right, and uh, this is just a desiccant. Um, so this is put into packages to absorb excess moisture. Because one of the things we talked a lot, uh, we talked about a lot on our um, our COVID. I did a COVID video all about the 3D printing that we were doing for um, for for making those face masks and. One of the things that I mentioned was how humidity can affect your 3D printer. So, um, you know, it can generate excess strings as your, uh, um, as your extruder is moving on the build plate. It can create a string between points, which you may not, you definitely don't want, but sometimes it can, sometimes it's less harmless than others. And, um, yeah, just generally affect your build quality. You um, typically want to take climate control into account when you are setting up 3D printer. So uh, before we get into the main event, let's see what's in this last box. So we've got uh, MKS3 Plus accessories. What do we got in here? Ooh, we got some tools. We got some isopropyl alcohol. So one of the big, dif whoop. One of the big differences for um, for this printer versus the old printer is the build plate. Let me grab, let me grab the build plate off of the old printer. It is detachable. So the old printer uh, is, it's actually glass. Uh, it was, I don't, have, I think it's more of a plastic than it is a glass. But uh, it's, it's not heated. Is the important part, the important takeaway. A lot of 3D printers have a heated build plate, and when you have a heated build plate. 
um, that helps with print adhesion. Um, so print adhesion is just making sure that the thing that you are printing adheres or sticks to the build plate, right? So, um, so that's really important. Otherwise, as your extruder is, is squirting out plastic filament, your print can just kind of fly everywhere. So um, since this is an unheated build plate that is really just clear plastic, we put down this painter's tape to aid in the adhesion um, of, the, of the printed object. And um, that usually works pretty well. As you can see, this, this one's pretty banged up. It's seen better days. But, um, but yeah, so the difference between the old printer and the new printer is one of the biggest differences is the bed. So in this case, with the new printer, the, we'll get all into it, but uh, one of the things that they recommend doing between each print is wiping it down with isopropyl alcohol. So they give you a few of those to get you, uh, to get you going. Looks like we've got some lubrication uh, for some of the moving parts. We've got a USB cable. You can never have enough USB cables. We've got some, I don't know what, oh, this is a spool holder. So you will put that on your spool of filament. We've got lots of spare screws. Hopefully we don't need all of those. We've got a power cable that's very important. I didn't think about that. I'm gonna have to go run an extension cord at some point because I totally wasn't thinking about power. Uh, and then we've got, oh man, some, this is, these are some great tools. This is a magnetic screwdriver. We've got some Allen wrenches or hex wrenches. And we've got a, um, a pretty nice looking pair of needle nose pliers. So, uh, that's exciting. And then, uh, can never have enough steel scrapers. These are super helpful for, like, if you've got an object on your build plate, you'd use a scraper to kind of get underneath it and pop it up if you have to. Although, one of the cool things about this, um, oh, it looks like we've got some glue. And, gosh, they really hooked us up. We've got a 16 gigabyte SD card. So that's, uh, that'll be handy for moving prints over to the new uh, printer. So, let's get a closer look at this printer. We'll move some of this stuff off to the side slide this guy right into view. So one of the first things you're gonna notice when you're looking at this printer versus our old printer is how small it is, right? It doesn't have the same insane housing and plastic. Like if you look at our old MakerBot, it's very bulky. It's got a lot of, uh, you know, everything is kind of enclosed and like there's just not a lot of uh, either, what I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. but. When you look at this one, you get the idea. So let's let's pop this off. This is just foam to protect the extruder. I'm just gonna shimmy it. Oh, it looks like we could actually slide it apart, maybe a little bit. Whoa, it's making me nervous. Don't want to break anything. All right, there we go. So we've got that taken care of and now you can see we've already got a 3d print on here so maybe i can just go ahead and demonstrate so the biggest difference between the build plate on this one versus this one is that this build plate is detachable so it's magnetic so i should just be able to pop it right up and there you go so when you have an object adhered to the build plate it's not coming off uh, previously, you'd have to use that, uh, where'd, where'd my scraper go? I just saw it a second ago. There it is. So previously, you'd, you'd use something like this scraper. Let me take it out of, the out of the package. And you'd get in here and you'd shimmy it underneath and, and a lot of times, oh sorry, you'd shimmy it underneath, you missed my, my shimmying motion. Um, and a lot of times that, you could scratch, you know, the build plate, that's a uh, really good reason why the other build plate has those uh, pock marks in the painter's tape. That's exactly why those are there. Because scraping, scraping got crazy. It got out of control. Uh, but with this one, this build plate is flexible. So I should be able to just pop it, just give it a little flex, and boom, there you go. 
Oh, wow. This is a quality print. Uh, so the reason I say that is because the back of this print is so perfectly smooth, I kind of just can't believe it. Um, that is nice. That is really nice. So that's one of the reasons I am very excited to be getting a new 3D printer is because um, the old one is very good for kind of roughing out these, these objects, but it was not ever very great for, um, uh, what do you call it? For like really, really fine and precise work. So, um, so yeah. So one of my stands is breaking, sorry about that. I might need to, to tighten some things. Hopefully this doesn't fall down because that's my microphone. Um, so this does heat up. It is a hinted, heated print bed. Uh, and it's got this great magnetic, whoops, I think I'm putting that on incorrectly. There's some guides. There we go. And it just pops right on. And then, yeah, you're supposed to, to wipe this down. The extruder, uh, so another big difference between this printer and our old printer is that the, um, Let's see, can I do like a picture in picture here with uh, the action cam and the webcam? Hello, yeah, there we go. So one of the big differences with uh, this printer and the old printer is th just in terms of its movement. So the old printer tended to, the um, the extruder could move uh, kind of in a, in a full like, um, I guess what would that be? Four degrees of motion. Uh, so it could go side to side and it could go forward and back. And the, ex and the build plate would move up and down. So then it could kind of like do everything in there. This one is a little bit opposite where you can see the extruder moves side to side, uh, but the build plate uh, can move um, in multiple directions. So it can move forward and backwards and it can, uh, oh, we're getting a little flicker on the screen when I do that. That's probably bad, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, so in the end, they result in kind of the same operation, but um, they just go about the way that they do things a little bit differently. So I'm not really sure where to start other than we need to, we need to plug this thing in and we need to, uh, I think we need to take this little piece of plastic off the screen. Is that possible? I don't know, I see some bubbling and that'll drive me nuts. But do you notice this is 3D printed? This is 3D printed. All the orange pieces are 3D printed. Even it looks like possibly parts of the extruder itself are 3D printed, which is just absolutely amazing. Because this tells me that if something breaks on this printer, I should be able to print a replacement part for the most part. And since this whole operation, both the software and the hardware have been open sourced and the specs for this stuff is pretty much fully available. Um, I shouldn't have any trouble finding what I need to make that happen, whether it be finding someone to, to help and give me advice or just like let me download the parts that I need, you know, the, the STL files of the parts that I need to, to print. And I could be wrong on some of that stuff, but that's, that's the promise, that's the impression that I get. So, um, all right. Well, oh, that so, and that was going to dovetail me into the next thing that I wanted to mention is one of the other big differences between um, this printer and uh, our old printer is since our old printer was a MakerBot and it ran on a very proprietary um, system. That, proprietary meaning like it was it's owned and developed by the company, and the company doesn't let you, you know, do anything. Um, in order to send, to interface with the printer, to send jobs to it, to do anything like that, um, the, uh, are you guys seeing this? I don't know, that looked a little weird. I don't know, hopefully. Um, the uh, software required to do that is MakerBot's own software. They make it, they develop it, they distribute it, they update it, they control it. So if you want to do anything with your 3D printer, it is all done through this interface. And like I can pull up the, uh, the 3D printer here. It has a webcam. The new printer doesn't have a webcam, but it also kind of doesn't need one. Um, so that will be 
Oh, sorry, you can't see that because my, my face is in the way. So there's a view from the 3D printer. We also have a smaller MakerBot, our MakerBot Mini, and you can see a view from the MakerBot Mini. Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of that stuff is going to change because now we are going to also have to switch to an open source um, software. Um, I'm actually not sure what it is. I'll, I'll, I'll download and install whatever it is that they recommend, but I have not uh, fully looked into that. So I did, um, I did, you know, and I, I did just think of the first thing that we probably need to do in order to get started. Let's take a look back at the computer screen. When I purchased this uh, printer for Project Next Generation, I was sent an email uh, from the company basically saying like, here's the first thing that you need to do. Um, and so one of the first things that we need to do is install a new firmware update. Um, and so we can go ahead and get started doing that. How are we doing on time? We are doing awesome on time. I'm glad, as disappointed as I am to not be uh, fully assembling uh, this ourselves, because this probably would have been pretty fun to put together. Uh, I am glad that we got it fully assembled so that we can just hit the ground running and get started because it's still going to be a challenge to learn how to use this software. So let's go ahead and download the, uh, the we're, so printing software is one thing, but this is the firmware that runs on the actual printer. So I think, let's see, we've got some choices here. Let's make sure we download the right thing. Um, so I believe we need uh, 3.1. Um, one thing that I just realized is I brought up a, oh no, okay. We need to save this to an SD card, which they gave us an SD card, but our computer doesn't necessarily have an SD card reader. So I will have to try to track one of those down. And I think I've got one in the cabinet over here. Uh, if not, um, I'm gonna have to pause the stream and go grab it. So, uh, cause I think we're gonna need that. So I'm just looking here at some of the other things here. And it looks like we're gonna need this too. This is called the Prusa Slicer. Um, so that's that's great. So that is, uh, that's the piece of software that you need to slice a object, a 3D file, into um, a path that is sent to the 3D printer, sometimes referred to as G-code. Um, so, uh, we got real deep into that in the COVID video that I made. Um, so if you want to check that out, um, also while I'm on the subject and I've got this up on the screen, go to elmwoodparklibrary.org slash PNG. You can hit us up there. We've got links to our YouTube, uh, account, um, how to check out one of our laptops to take home and, and use, um, on the YouTube account, we have an entire uh, playlist just for 3D printing videos. So you can go check that out. If you're interested in the 3D printer, you wanna know more about what we've been up to with it, click on our YouTube link. It'll take you to our YouTube account, go to playlists, uh, and we should have one right here. Uh, a lot of them are gonna be under the Tinkercad header, so don't let that throw you off. Tinkercad, 3D printing, hand in hand. And we've got, this is the, uh, this is the video I was telling you about, and then we've got a few, whoop, sorry, we are, okay, thank you, me. Um, yeah, so check that out. If you're interested in 3D printing, we'll get you started that way. Let me close all these tabs that I should not have opened. And there's a train that is coming through, so that's probably getting picked up on the mic. It's great. I am going to mute the mic. I'm gonna step away for a second. I'll let you stare at this beautiful 3D printer while I find an SD card reader and we can get started. All right, I'll be right back. All right, you can't say I'm not prepared for everything. So we've got a computer, we've got an SD card, and we've got a computer that doesn't have an SD card reader, which is, um, you know, it happens. At least I don't think it does. 
But what we do have is a uh, an SD card uh, reader adapter thing. So this is USB. So all you need is a USB port. So uh, that's what we're going to do. I am going to plug this in and hopefully it's not going to mess up all my other USB devices that I have plugged in. Sometimes it does. Uh, and then I'm going to take my SD card that I just got from the good people at Prusa and I'm going to plug it into one of these slots, which I believe is one of these, maybe this one. Oh. And sometimes they're upside down, sometimes they're right side up. There we go. Got it. Okay. So on the, uh, oops. So I just got a pop-up notification that it was like, hey, we detected that you plugged this in. And uh, that's definitely true. Okay, so we need to go to this folder where we downloaded our um, thing. And we need to unzip this because this is a zipped folder. So I'm just going to hit extract all. It's going to ask me uh, where do you want to extract it to. And I'm cool with it doing that right there. All right, firmware upgrade guide. That is what I want to see because I've never done this before. So I need to know uh, what's involved. So we're going to open this PDF with Adobe Reader. And we're going to we're going to read a PDF live on stream. Oh yeah. That jaw-dropping exciting content where you just watch Okay, I just clicked the wrong thing. You should always read your read your pop-ups. Don't just click blindly. Okay, so also let's do uh, page. No, let's do. Oh, I can't read that. Here's where we. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So I feel like we just start. Okay, in this guide, we will upgrade the firmware of your original Prusa i3 printer. Okay, that's just a picture. Okay, so we downloaded, that's what we just did. We downloaded everything. Firmware Updater is now part of Slicer. Okay, now that's a different program, Slicer PE. That is, um, I mean, that we could use that as well. That is a very popular slicing program for 3D files, 3D printer files, but uh, um, yeah, so we could do that if we wanted to. But I think we're just going to stay the course here. All right, so download the zip file with the firmware to your computer and unzip it. We just did that. Awesome. Uh, for a mini Rambo used in MK2, MK2S, MK2S, MMU, MK2.5, you have to choose the firmware based on the version of the board you have. Inside the package, there will be two files with either blah, blah, blah. All right, so that's not what we have. We have an MK, according to the box, right? Uh, we have an MK. Look, I already know it's an MK3, but I just want to be sure. Yes, it is an I3 MK3. So we that's what we're looking for. For MK3, there is only one version, no need to choose. Okay, well, <laughs> great, cool. Uh, all right, so updating the firmware using Slicer, that's not what we're gonna do. Well, I guess we can. That's really the only option. Uh, connect the printer to your computer using the bundled USB cable. Oh, they just wanna do us um, straight up. Okay, well, we did get a bundled USB cable. This is a power cable, this is a USB cable. So we can, we can get into this. I like the idea of doing it um, straight through the, you know, directly from the computer to the, uh, to the 3D printer. The SD card stuff always makes me a little nervous because sometimes files can get corrupted. It doesn't happen very often, but it happens. Uh, this is a very uh, long USB cable, which is cool. Um, and, while I was up, I should have gotten another extension cord so that I could plug 
this in because power is going to be important. And uh, so I'm going to get up and do that. It'll take me just a second. Because we need power. All right. Sit tight. I'm going to get an extension cord. We're going to plug this thing in. crazy over here. The glue is falling on the ground. It's about this time in the unboxing process where I start looking around and realizing that at some point I have to clean all this up. <laughs> and then it's like, ah, oh, this isn't as fun. All right, let me grab a drink of water. I just sprayed water everywhere. I hope that's not a problem. Okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh no, it's just all over my pants. Cool. <laughs> Great. So I think I see, yep, here we go. Here, let's, let me spin this around so you can see. So this is the power supply. You can tell because it's got a big old on off switch on it and it's got a receptacle for this power cord. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. And not gonna hit the switch just yet. Uh, let's see. But we are now plugged into power. And uh, so let's go back and consult that guide again. Uh, where were you? That's not what we want. <laughs> I mean, okay. Cool. That one is labeled correctly. Okay, cool. So I'm just looking at the guide here. Um, it wants us to download this slicer software, but I don't feel like that's correct. Call me crazy. Also, what is already loaded on? Oh, we've got some G code for. So this, I just flipped over to look at the SD card. Um, and so these are all the files that are located, that are already saved on this. Um, SD card and these are all looks like sample files so that's really cool um, we've got some test patterns we've got you know a triceratops a tree frog all kinds of stuff so hopefully we can get to 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 those in just a few minutes before we do that though I want to go back to the web page um, and I want to take a look at this drivers and apps thing so the Prusa slicer is listed as being new um, and so that's kind of what I want to go for. So let's give that a shot because that's what they're like recommending. So, um, oh, my contact lens is popping out and it's driving me crazy. And it started right before this show, and I was like, it's cool. I can do this, I can power through it. But instead, I just look nuts, right? Look a little crazy. That's all right. Uh, okay, we're just. Filling time while we download another hundred megabytes, and uh, yeah, so we'll try this. I feel like Prusa Slicer is probably what we want versus the Slicer um, software, but we can try both. But this is on their website, and they're like, "Hey, download this." So that makes me think. That makes me think that their documentation here is just a little bit old. I could be wrong, so we'll find out right now as we open this executable that we just downloaded. And it's asking us questions. We're going to install this. Hopefully it installs pretty quickly. Hopefully it doesn't require us to restart this computer because that's not going to happen. All right, so we've got some we've got some options here. We can install, oops. We can install 
We're gonna get the software, the slicing software. That's what we need. We're gonna get the utilities. I think we should also download the Windows drivers. That's probably a good idea. And then we already have a lot of those test objects located on our um, SD card. I couldn't think of the word there for a second. And I'm not sure what Pronterface is. So, and it's not checked by default. Should I be? Hmm. Hmm. All right, let's give it a shot. Let's throw caution to the wind. Let's just do this. Create a desktop. Install. Go. Make it happen. Be fast. Be done already. This is actually really fast. I thought for sure it was going to take way longer than this. Checking for updates. Getting that quick update. It's fun. The fan just totally kicked up. Uh, we're we're doing stuff now. Oh, okay. Now we gotta install the device drivers. Uh, yes, please install the device drivers. Yes, finish. Cool. That was fast. This is all very fast. Uh, I'm going to uncheck these. There is like a huge like tutorials. There is a massive like. Um, there's an introductory course that I'll probably take off stream um, that will tell me like how to get started. So that is all stuff that I can do. Um, let's see. All right, let's open up our new Prusa Slicer app that we just downloaded and installed. probably happened when I unplugged the microphone or unplugged that USB port by accident. This microphone. So anyway, I was telling you the reason I noticed that the microphone wasn't working is because this thing is so quiet. It is crazy quiet. Um, I am of course comparing that to the old MakerBot, uh, which was like, you know, like really, really loud. So, okay, I got a message. I have. I wasn't paying attention. We got too much stuff going on here. Uh, but we've got, what is this? Please clean the nozzle for calibration. Click when done. What do you want me to do? You want, you want me to touch that? Dude, no one has touched this printer since this came from the factory. So I'm going to say you're good. I'm not, I'm not cleaning you. It's so quiet. Man, that's bananas. Calibration failed. Check the axes and run again. Well, that's probably bad. Please check our handbook and fix the problem. Then resume. All right, we got the handbook. So let's look through it. Uh, I do like these stickers. Those are kind of great. We can take a look at some of those while we wait. Oh, hang on. Let me flip them this way. All right. So I don't know why it's failing. We are going to be looking for, I mean, I'm assuming it has something to do with uh, cleaning the, the printhead, but I don't know what that's all about. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's get in here. So here is what we just went through, the calibration flow and wizard. So you've got start, remove the shipping helpers, remove the test print, calibrate the calibrate Z. So then that's where we that's where we got stuck. So let's go down here to um, we didn't get an error code, did we? Self test. Uh well here, let's get into it. We did not 
All right. Well, you know what? The one thing is that we got interrupted on is we never actually installed our uh, our firmware update, which I was hoping we could do through this interface. So let's see if maybe that is a possibility. Flash printer firmware. All right, and we do have a firmware image. And we have detected our uh, thingy. Let's go to uh, the downloads folder, this uh, Prusa folder. And we have a hex file here. So I'm going to, I guess we're going to send that. And I really hope that that's the right thing to do uh, so that I don't brick the printer the day we get it. Hey, we got a message on the screen on the screen of the printer that says upgrading firmware. Do not disconnect. Right, 22, 25%, and it is going up and up and up and up and up. So that's cool. And then maybe we'll start this process again once that's finished. So this is all part of the game. I don't know how long this is going to take. Um, the progress bar on the screen seems like it's going to take a little bit of time. But how are we doing on time? All right. I'd like to wrap things up in about 10 minutes or so, but um, I would also love to get a test print going. So we'll see if we can do that so you can see this thing in action. That would be, that would be the perfect ending. If we could plug it in, turn it on, set it up, and print something. So we are at uh, we are we've written the firmware. We are now verifying the firmware. We are at seventy percent finished. So we're making progress. Can you, if I like, cut the glare on that? Can you kind of see? Not really. All right, we have rebooted. Today is the first day of summer reading here at the library, so that is exciting. You can come down here, get signed up, start reading. You can do, uh, you can read. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, of course you can read. You can. How how do you phrase that? You can do. All right, hang on. What I was trying to say is audiobooks, graphic novels, audio, um, ebooks regular books they all count that's what, all i was trying to say yeah all right let's start this process again remove the shipping helpers did it remove the test print did it run the z calibration do it is the steel sheet on the heat bed yeah do your thing buddy All right, so as far as the computer is concerned, I believe we are now on the latest and greatest firmware. Um, so that's good. Oh, buddy. Okay, I didn't like that sound at all. Now what are you doing? Oh, please clean the nozzle for calibration. I don't understand what that means, but I'm gonna grab this, uh, I'm gonna grab this isopropyl uh, alcohol wet wipe and I'm gonna Clean the nozzle for calibration. Hold up. Hold up. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look this up. Cause there's a digital guide right here. And uh, and I just, uh, I don't wanna screw this up. So let's take a look at the, uh, I believe I saw, where was it? The handbook right here. So they gave us a, um, they gave us a paper copy of the handbook, but one thing I love about digital copies is that you can keyword search. So I'm gonna say clean nozzle, and I find nothing. Okay, all right. Ah, okay, so they did give us a small needle. I like that they refer to it as an acupuncture needle. Uh, and so to refer to chapter 13.5 for nozzle cleaning. 
Okay. Do not touch the nozzle during these procedures as it is preheated and may you may burn yourself. May you may burn yourself. Uh, to make cleaning easier, move the extruder head up on the LCD menu. Settings, move access, move Z-axis, blah, blah, blah. Okay, filament is pouring out a little. I'm just, I'm going to stick my head in here. I want to see what's going on. Okay. I mean, that all checks out. It looks good to me. I'm going to grab this, uh, this, this needle and take it out of its packaging. It's very small. So I don't know how well it's going to show up on stream, but hold it in front of something black here maybe so it'll pop. But yeah, it's not. Uh, oh, God, okay. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's not sharp. Yes, it's very sharp. Uh, it's a needle. Genius. Okay. Uh, so heat the nozzle according to the filament you want. Um, okay. Choose load filament option. None of the filament is going through the nozzle. You know what? That's what I want to do. Just let me um, just let me do a load filament option. Well, and also, I don't think that this is heated, so this needle isn't going to do anything. I also cannot see what I'm doing. Wasn't I just talking about my contact lenses? Yeah, dude. I don't want to do this. This isn't working. All right. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go back over here to the Prusa slicer, which should allow us to do some stuff on the printer, like loading and unloading filament. Um, so I think that's what I want to do. Uh, filament. Here we go. Uh, what can we do? What can we do? Filament overrides, cooling, printer settings, extruder one. I'm not seeing. So like this is the first time I've ever used this software. It is completely different than anything I've ever used before. So, uh, okay. So let's see what we can and cannot do. Please clean the nozzle for calibration. So I feel like cleaning the nozzle for calibration means I need to remove this little bit of filament that is still stuck in in the extruder from the factory. And uh, yeah, man, like I just don't know how to do that. So I am stuck before I have even started, which is annoying, right? Because normally, normally that stuff would be here. In and I say normally as in like, uh, what do you call it? MakerBot, MakerBot world. Configuration wizard. Preferences, firmware. We already did a lot of this stuff. So there's kind of nothing I can do here. Uh, the message I've got on the screen now says measuring reference height of calibration point. So, but it's probably going to get down here and then realize it's got filament loaded and then it's going to fail. Or maybe it's just going to work and this whole last 10 minutes will have been for nothing. That's kind of what I think is happening. So I know this part from watching a couple of videos online where it measures nine points of calibration. And uh, it's all very exciting. I mean, I will say that is kind of exciting. I, I was being sarcastic, but at the same time, um, the MakerBot, the old MakerBot would measure for two points of calibration. So it would measure a point at the front middle and a point on like the side middle or uh, yeah, and um, and it always just seemed like that wasn't enough for a properly calibrated device. But uh, you know, I'm no 3D printer expert, so I don't know. 
So while it is preheating the extruder, we need to get up uh, another 100 degrees or so. I am going to attach the uh, MakerBot, um, or the, the filament. So this attaches, it's just got a little hook there. And I should just be able to pop it down and on. Let me stand up. I think it will work better if I stand up. There we go. And then these little guys, I don't even think you can see that. Let me tilt up. These guys go up here. So you got some sick handlebars for your, uh, for your 3D printer here. You want to pop a wheelie or whatever. And then I, okay, we got a loud beat. And then you can put that up there, like that. Uh, so it's telling me to uh, insert the filament into the extruder and then press the knob to load it. So uh, I believe we've done that. And maybe that's why it beeped. I would actually like to load this filament into the extruder. Um, but it didn't really give me an opportunity to, to, to remove it. I can feel it pulling the, oh yeah, a little bit of a clog. Okay, filament extruding and with the correct color, I'm going to say no, because that will hopefully give us a little bit more time to load. Definitely feel a clog in there, but that's okay. Hopefully we can work through it. And just keep doing this, repeating this process. I'm just gonna keep saying no. <laughs> All right, what if I say yes? All right, because honestly, what I want to do is remove this. I don't want to. I don't know what I just did. I guess I rebooted it or turned it off. No. I was thinking there would be like a menu here someplace. So this dial is adjusting percentage and I don't know what that's for here we go unload filament thank you um, I believe this is PLA okay so that's annoying all right Preheating to unload, go for it. Yes, please do that. Uh, I will say the other thing compared to our MakerBot uh, is that the the heating happens crazy fast on this one. And that beep is crazy loud. All right, press the knob to unload the filament. That's what I want to do, get this out. Yeah, S jammed. So let's do it again. Sometimes if you just do this over and over again, you can get a jammed piece of filament out. Yeah, I can already tell it's jammed. I'm super happy that this is not my first printer, that this is not the first time I've ever used a 3D printer because this, as an unboxing exper experience, this would be super, super annoying. Something like this happened to me uh, with, uh, I think it happened with, Every printer I've ever gotten, except for the MakerBot Mini, uh, I've had an unboxing experience similar to this where 
it just doesn't work. There's a jam or something, you know, and you have to deal with it. You can't just like take it out of the box and have fun on your first day. Okay, so pulling on it, not working. So I think what we're gonna do now is try to load it back in and hope we get lucky. All right, just press the knob, insert the filament. All right, so maybe we can, so sometimes you can just kind of work it like back and forth and um, it'll heat up. And then eventually you can get it to let go. Auto loading filament is active. Just press the knob and insert the filament. Well, yeah, it's not working. One way, oh, 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 hang on, hang on. We got a little bit of progress. We got a little bit of progress. There's definitely a gap in there. All right, now we've got our awesome sound that's generated when the uh, filament is clogged, when there's a clog in the extruder. So we're just gonna say yes because we want it to stop doing that. And then let's see if we can't unload. Get. Oh, I made a little bit more progress that time. Now if we could just get it to let go the rest of the way. Uh, okay, so I think that's our culprit right there. So that, um, that filament is supposed to be completely straight, but since it's got that kind of knobby end on it, uh, that's our clog, I think. And sometimes that's all it takes. So, let's see if we can't properly load some more filament now. Yeah, I've seen some, some definite clogs that will surprise you where you're just like, how, how did that of all things stop everything from working? Yeah. It's just kind of impressive. All right, so, you know, it's just a tiny little bump and it's like showstopper. Now this may not work because there may still be a clog down in the nozzle. Hopefully it came with that piece of filament, but We'll find out, all right, we've got extrusion happening here. So that is fantastic, that's a great sign. We are in business. All right, filament is extruding, yes, good deal. All right, so now we should be able to take our SD card. We're gonna plug that directly into the side of the machine here. And we're gonna print something cool. So there's a test pattern. There's a whistle. There's something called Batman. 3D hubs, 3D uh, bottle opener, a tree frog, uh, triceratops, Nefertiti. Uh, I can't read that one. Should we just go with the castle? The castle is like, I think the castle was the first thing that I ever printed on our first 3D printer, so let's just do that. So, how are we doing on time? We're a little bit over, but I think it's worth it. I don't know how long this, uh, looks like, uh, it's either gonna take 13 minutes or 13 hours. <laughs> I don't know, one of the two. All right, we're doing a quick like uh, calibration check, just uh, checking stuff out. All right. Oh, I think this is a really big castle. This is an extremely large castle. I feel like maybe we should have scaled this thing down. I 
it's so quiet. It is so quiet. Let's see if I can get you a little bit closer view. Don't really want to move this while it's running, but I'll try to just slide it a little bit. pretty cool all right I tell you what I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes you can watch it um, I have to go use the restroom so uh, I really don't think it's gonna finish today while we're on stream um, so I apologize for that we're gonna get it started and then probably uh, you know have to have to quit halfway through but I'm gonna let this continue running and then I'll come back and we'll we'll you know say goodbye okay so I'll be I'll be back in a moment
Mic mute. Okay. I. This is so quiet. I forgot that it was running. I came in the room and I honestly couldn't tell that it was running. Um. It's just putting down a base layer now. I do think this is honestly, um. 13 hours, not 13 minutes. Uh, I was hoping it would just print a small, like, kind of sample. Um, we could stop it and maybe do something else, but uh, but I don't think I'm going to. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna send it home. And we're gonna. We're gonna end the stream. Uh, we've 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 assembled our 3D printer. We've calibrated it. We have updated its firmware. We've loaded a actual piece of filament versus the. Uh, piece of filament that was jammed in there from before so so we're making good progress so i think this uh wow i'm, I'm actually really lucky i didn't burn myself right there because i forgot it's a heated print bed the old one wasn't heated so you could just like reach up and chip away a piece of filament and not hurt yourself but this one is heated so um i gotta be careful of that for sure um i'm excited because i think this is gonna allow us to do a uh, higher fidelity prints and make some really cool stuff that we weren't able to make before or that was harder to make before um i don't think we're going to be getting rid of our old printer for sure um that thing still definitely has a purpose and is still good for a lot of things so i'm not really sure what's going to happen there we also have our MakerBot mini which isn't going anywhere either because that one is small enough that I can very easily take it to schools. If you attend John Mills or uh, Elm Elementary or St. Celestine's, chances are I may have visited one of your classes with the MakerBot Mini in the past. So we'll definitely keep that because it's great for traveling. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think this one will probably going forward be our, our, our superstar printer that can do all the cool stuff. So, and if we have something simple or something, you know, something else, we can do that on the other one. So, I don't know, but uh, I'm excited to see what happens. So, like I said before, if you are interested in 3D printing at the library, definitely go to our, uh, to that webpage that I had up earlier. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up again. It might still just be sitting right here. Um, go to Elmwood Park library.org slash png that will bring you to the png sub page you can hit up our youtube channel and check out that tinkercad playlist with all of most of all of our 3d printing videos i'll put this one in there too um you can follow along learn how to use tinkercad which is a really great resource if you're interested in designing your own stuff for um for the 3d printer if you are interested in printing out stuff on the 3D printer, you can always get in touch. You can just send me an email, uh, png at elmwoodparklibrary.org, O-R-G, is, um, is the email address. Or you can go to the website, go to How Do I, and uh, there should be a page here for, uh, oh yeah, I just had to scroll down a little bit. How Do I, and under the technology selection at the bottom, 3D printing. And uh, that basically will tell you how to get in touch with me to um, print something out of your own on the 3D printer and pick it up here at the library. So definitely give that a shot if you're interested in what's going on with that. Oops, that's not what we wanted. We want to go back to the action. There we go. Um, yeah, so I'll let that continue on, I suppose. But uh, I have been Aaron Sievers. I am the technology librarian here at the Elmwood Park Public Library. And this has been Project Next Generation Online. I'd like to thank the State Library of Illinois, who provides us the grant money to buy all these cool things like this new 3D printer. And I'd like to thank the Elmwood Park Public Library for giving us a place. Whoa, okay, let's get getting that. For the Elmwood Park Public Library for giving us a place to do all of these cool activities. So, uh, next week, I don't know what we're going to do next week. Um, so we'll have to figure something out. But keep, uh, stay tuned, and uh, we will definitely be back with more Project Next Generation online very soon. All right. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll, I'll post a picture of whatever this ends up being uh, if I don't have to turn it off uh, so that you can see the end result. All right. See you next time. Bye.